Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Nathaniel by John Saul. This is another Paperbacks from Hell book. Um, if you've seen it, I think I've already done, uh, I think it's like um, House of Reckoning and also uh, The Blind Dead or something along those lines by him. This is going to be more akin to the last one. This is another like folk horror -y novel. And it says, for hundreds of years, the people of Prairie Bend have whispered Nathaniel's name in wonder and fear. Some say he is a folktale created to frighten children on cold winter nights. Some swear he is a terrifying spirit returned to avenge the past. But soon, very soon, some will learn Nathaniel lives still, that he is darkly, horrifyingly real. Nathaniel, he is the voice that calls to young Michael Hall across the prairie night. The voice that draws the boy into the shadowy depths of the old, crumpling, forbidden barn. The chanting, compelling voice he will follow faithfully beyond the edge of terror. So yeah, this book is kind of about a ghost that's not exactly a ghost. Um, that is basically wrecking revenge on this town called Prairie Bend. Typical folk horror fashion, we have Michael who is new in town with his family and they slowly start to learn some of the dark secrets of the town and why Nathaniel is going to want to, uh, you know, bring his revenge on it. Uh, Michael, for the most part, is kind of annoying, um, but I, he can't help it. It's kind of like the other book that I've done by John Saul. I mean, kids are kids, kids are stupid. Uh, <laughs> Kids do all the wrong things in horror movies, and they do all the wrong things in horror books, especially in this book. Um, also, when he has an imaginary friend named Nathaniel that he's playing with that's telling him about dead babies buried in fields, uh, his family is just like, yeah, he's adapting to his new environment. So it wasn't just him. His parents are also very weird in this book as well. Um, yeah, this is just a straight up folk horror novel there isn't a lot of deviation from tropes in this. I mean, other than the fact that um, the way Nathaniel acts sometimes, it's hard to tell if he is alive or a ghost. And I feel like that's pretty ominous. Uh, there is like a couple moments in this book that, are, I mean, there's some twists. There are some things that are definitely gonna keep you reading all the way up to the very end. Um, but yeah, if you're looking for a straight up folk horror novel, this is it. It's not as wild as some of the other paperbacks from Hell books. I mean, other than the fact that like, you know, there's kids being killed and stuff like that. Uh, it's not like uh, the Sendai or the Swarm or any of those like uh, super wild paperback from Hell's books that kind of like, or like Totem or, you know what I mean? That just have like these crazy twists and stuff in there like that's not really this book. This book is just a straight up folk horror novel, which is fun if you like folk horror novels. I love folk horror novels. This one hits, like I said, all the tropes. It has the family that's moving to the small town. The small town has dark secrets. Um, the people in the small town are willing to do anything to protect these secrets, even if it means like getting rid of other people or um, basically just doing whatever they can to protect themselves and the town. Um, so very much pitting the, the family against everyone else in a way, in a sense. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's like folky stuff, there's psychic kids, there's dead kids, there's ghosts wrecking revenge. Uh, there's some people killed with pitchforks, which I think is really fun and interesting. Um, and the moral of the story really in this book is like, if there is a dark, creepy, dilapidated barn on your property, don't let children play in it because they might make a new imaginary friend that wants to kill everybody in the town. Uh, so yeah, I love this cover. Um, definitely probably why I picked up this book. I think this is the first John Saw book I grabbed. It was this one and then like, uh, The Blind Fury. That's it, not The Blind Dead. I keep saying The Blind Dead. I am sorry. I know some of you guys are going to correct me in the comments. Blind Fury is the other... Uh, John Saul like folk horror novel that I did um, a review of which is kind of the same thing uh, Family moves to a town town has a secret and another ghost out for revenge novel I am super sorry the Sun just came out and came through the window. So this video might just get very bright I do apologize for that. Uh, hopefully you guys can still see pretty well 
But yeah, I if you like folklore novels, I think this one is definitely worth picking up. I, it was a lot of fun. It like I said, it hits all the tropes. So if you're someone that's been re that reads a lot of folklore novels, there's nothing really new that's going to be done here, um, which is fine and fun. Like I said, it hits it hits all the tropes. It's everything you want out of a folklore novel. Um, it's fun. I like this book a lot more than I like The Blind Fury. Uh, I thought the I like the ending a lot better, uh, which I'm not going to spoil for you guys. Um, yeah, I'm excited to read more by John Saul. I think I have a couple other books by him on my uh, shelf, which I'm not going to try to read from here because I know I'm going to get all the titles wrong. Um, but yeah, I love this cover. Uh, I actually like this is a beautiful cover. I like the whole like the glowing gray with the barn in the background. It tells you everything that uh you know is gonna happen on in this um and i also like that the grave says here lies nathaniel who died of his sins one thing i do kind of wish they had gone into a little more because uh there was a couple explanations but it does say in the book that uh some of the people that have these almost like psychic abilities or like go in the barn that they hear certain voices that tell them to do things. And I really kind of wish it had gone more into detail on those voices, but that's because I'm someone that likes to know everything. Um, we are kind of given an answer to what, you know, they think it is. Um, but I like definite answers. Um, but that being said, it is kind of fun that it is left for you to guess. Are those voices the dead kids? Are they demons? You know, what is driving people to like the point of madness out here in this like barn? But yeah, other than that was my only real gripe with the book. Um, if you find a copy of this, uh, get it. If you want to read it, I think there's ebook copies. I'm not 100% sure. I will link uh, in the show notes. It's kind of cool. I have been finding a lot of, um, a lot more, um, uh, Oh, I'm fishing for words here. A lot more books like this and like even the Richard Lehman books and stuff like that on Amazon. Amazon now has, uh, or maybe they've always had it, I just haven't paid attention, but they have Amazon on Encore, Encore, which is bringing back a lot of uh, previously out of print novels. And it looks like, you know, maybe, maybe they're paying more attention to horror novels. Um, horror is experiencing quite a boom because it does seem like I am seeing more and more um, previously hard to find or out of print like horror novels where it'll be like the paperback will be like from the 70s but it has a brand new like Kindle uh, edition in the link. Um, sadly they are like full price though which is what it is. I'm hoping all the authors are getting paid and it's not like one of those things where they're just buying back catalogs of house names and nobody's getting paid, that would really suck. Um, if you saw the Wade Everett video, I did link in Wade Everett uh, a Kindle edition, and I do believe Wade Everett was a house name. No one ever answered me on that in the comments, um, but I do believe reading that was a house name, so it does like, I mean, this obviously isn't like booktube, it doesn't really pertain to like people that just like to read, but as someone that like writes and makes money off of their written works, short stories, novels, and stuff like that. It does kind of make me wonder, you know, what what kind of happens there. Um, if you write a novel under a house name and Amazon buys the rights to it, do you still get royalties? Uh, if anyone knows that, please let me know in the, uh, in the comments below. Uh, this video is now getting long as I went on a weird tangent. That is, that's probably a video all on its own, if I can ever find the answers. But yeah, uh, if you like folk horror and you like John Saul and you want to read a John Saul book or a folk horror book that you haven't read, look for Nathaniel. Uh, it's a fun read. I, I tore through this. Um, yeah, it's fun. Uh, and it does everything a folk horror novel needs to do. Um, if you've read this book, like this book, dislike this book, please let me know in the comments. As always, please like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.